Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. This is video three in my series on making copper jackets for bullets. Wanted to talk a little bit about the strategy for making the outside of the die, this green piece here. The question is at hand is ensuring that the two holes are lined up. One way to do it would be to take your two chunks, machine out this piece as necessary, and then drill your holes to lock them together, and then at that point, run your center line. The problem with that is the top hole here is, in this instance right now, 0.501, or it's about one thou bigger than this punch. It's just a guide for that punch. This hole will be about 0.505 or 506. You need a little bit of clearance for a proper shear, if you will. I don't have a problem using a four jaw to get these two sep slugs separately lined up. In other words, boring the holes um, separately versus together, which I think is the way I'll go. The question then becomes ensuring that these alignment pins are perfect. They've gotta be dead nuts perfect. And that I've gotta think about might be a little tricky. But before we tackle all that, I did some uh, more thinking and I need to change the diameter of the blank. I was going to start with a 0.5 inch blank. The problem is that that is too small of a wall thickness when this punch here turns into a die, meaning it's too thin to, I think, support it when it goes over the purple piece to perform the first drawing operation. The ID of this is 0.42 and the OD is 0.5 so that's a 0.04 inch or 40 thou wall thickness too thin I think so I'm going to increase this I think to 0.6 or so which should give me a, a bit more cushion the other thing I need to think about and this may be just a trial by fire is once you push the punch down turning it into a die and you've now got your cup formed over the purple piece and inside of the yellow piece, you can then back the yellow piece off, but it's a question of, does it stick over the purple piece or inside the yellow piece? If it sticks, I want it to stick over the purple piece because that, uh, I'll figure out a way to lift that up and then you can use fingers to grab it off or something. If it sticks inside of the yellow piece, I may have a problem. The easiest way to do that is to turn a taper, but I'm not sure, I just need to think about that. Uh, but for now, let me increase the, the tolerance diameter here, and then we're gonna hop over on the lathe and start roughing out this one and a half inch blank. <clears throat> Actually, before we head over to the mill, I figured out, I did a little more thinking, I figured out how I'm gonna cut this. We can get rid of these punch pins right now, we don't need those. So we're gonna first part off our this slug and part of this slug. We're first gonna part off in the lathe the two pieces. I'll probably leave this one a little bit long to hold it later. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna machine this piece. And we're gonna machine the groove in it on the Tormach and then we're gonna drill four holes the two holes that run along the plane, the y-axis here, are going to be clearance holes for set screws, 832 set screws. The two smaller holes that are off center are going to be for 1 8 inch dowel pins. Those are what will provide the alignment. What we'll then do is we'll sandwich this back together so it's one piece. We'll stick it in the lathe, we'll dial it in as accurate as we can, and then we'll turn the outside just as a reference geometry, and then we will very carefully drill a smaller hole, say 3 8 inch, and ream it. That way we've got a smooth hole running along the center line into the second part, so we know these two parts will have concentric bores, and that way when we go to work these parts later, we can put a test indicator both on the outside and the inside to ensure sure we're running true. Now we can hop over to the machines. Okay, we're gonna face off the front of this so we've got a square surface and then we're gonna part off our two slugs. Great surface finish, uh, really happy with that. Okay. 
square up our parting tool. Looks good. Make sure, yep, we got plenty to come through on center. Now I'm gonna part off hair slower than that. Okay, there's our first slug. As you can see, a real nice surface finish from uh, when we faced it, and even the parting surface finish, uh, hard to complain about that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the second slug and then we'll hop over to the mill. Okay, we're in the middle of parting off our larger slug and we actually had some problems. Parting bit got dull. I already sharpened it up mid-cut, but I'll hop over to the grinder afterward and show you how I did that. Uh, and then I had, to, we're getting a little bit of chatter and I'm running it a lot slower. To help with that because we had to extend our parting bar out for clearance with our quick change tool post i don't love doing that but um you know parting here isn't really where we get our precision so it won't hurt anything um, but as a general rule i always hate to hear any chatter it's not too bad now so we'll finish this up and then i'll, I'll hop over to the grinder real quick here's the tip of our parting tool it looks okay now what happened before was that edge just dulled and so it rolled over Hard to cut when you've got a nice chamfered uh, tip. So we're going to take this out of its tool holder here, and we're going to run it across the grinder real quick and sharpen it up again. I've always been intimidated by grinding, and I've always felt that uh, being able to really run a grinder is what separates the men from the boys when it comes to uh, running a machine shop. You just got to dig, dig in, give it a try, and, and that's how you get better. And uh, I'm actually a lot more comfortable than I am uh, even was a year ago. And that'll do it uh, in this example. Like I said, I cleaned it up uh, just before this, so it didn't need much now. Uh, but that was all I did before, just a little bit more of that. We've got our part in the vise. The side that's touching the parallels is the side that we faced off in the lathe. So we knew that was true. This was the side that we parted. I've gone ahead and already machined that um, just so I've got a smooth surface. And now what we're going to do is find our zero with our, um, I don't know whether it's pronounced Heimer or Hamer. Uh, but I love it, that's what I do know. So we'll find our Z0 first, and then we'll go around and find our uh, XY0. I like to then check it on the other side to make sure you actually are starting with the right diameter stock, because I'm, use, I'm assuming that the leftmost side is negative 0.75. Um, so let's go over and check that that actually holds true. So I'm uh, about two and a half thou off there. I'm okay with that because remember, I'm not concerned right now with, uh, all I'm concerned about now is getting a pretty, pretty darn close and then the alignment of the dowel pins. Perfect, and that, the y-axis is actually dead on. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put in four flute quarter inch end mill. Got our safety glasses on here. Now, let's see here. I like to manually touch, not touch off, but go down and make sure you haven't screwed anything up massively with your offsets okay that looks about good and likewise I just check the part is centered and so forth okay so we're going to use this uh, quarter inch end mill to cut our groove or our slot that our raw material will slide through then we're going to use a, a spotting uh, spotting end mill 90 degree flute end mill to mark our four holes and then we're going to drill out the clearance hole with a number 19 which is 166 that should be three thou clearance for the threaded 832 uh, socket head cap screws 
and then we are going to drill uh, with a number 31 hole, which is 120 thou, which will leave 5 thou for us to ream out. Actually, we'll ream it to a thou under the press fit in the dowel pins. Good to go. Cycle start. Okay, part's done. I don't care how precise calipers are. Uh, don't worry about it when you've got the real part here. So let's drop it in and sure enough, perfect amount of clearance to let that slide through. We can feel it'll fit in the groove. Um, so that's good. Let's go ahead and uh, ream those two holes. Okay, a little cutting fluid on here and we will ream them to half or thou undersize. Okay, here's the part. Uh, really happy with how this turned out, actually. Stuff is machining really nicely. Our socket head cap screw fits through great. The uh, next thing we're gonna do is just tap in these dowel pins. These might be a hair tight. Okay, I grabbed a plate here to give a little more support to our table. Perfect. They're a little tight, tighter than I'd like, but I'd rather have that than uh, um, too loose. Oh, yeah, they're not too tight. They're great. Okay, so that's basically what our part's going to look like. I think my camera went out of focus here, sorry. The uh, vibration of the hammering. There we go. Anyways, that's all I can uh, fit in tonight, folks. So I'm actually gonna wrap that up here. I'll be back and we will tackle the other half of these uh, outside die. As always, folks, I do appreciate the comments. I appreciate the thumbs up. It really means a lot to me. If you've got any questions, let me know. Otherwise, that's all for now, folks. Take care.